Testing. One, two, three. Oh, wait. Now did it mess up my voice? If I have two of these things going at the same time? Voice fine? Okay. All right. So before I get started, um, I want to set up what I'm doing here. I really like these old action platformers like the Castlevania games and Ninja Gaiden and Shinobi and all those. And uh, my favorite way to play them is to pick them up, see how far I can get without continuing. Then once I can beat the game, see how far I can get without dying. So I've beaten a whole lot of pretty challenging NES games without dying. Uh, maybe not as impressive as like a hard arcade one CC, but I'm proud of it anyway. Um, and I think a lot of people would actually enjoy playing games the same way, but there's not a lot of that on like retro gaming YouTube and especially retro gaming Twitch. A lot of it is speedrun oriented. And, um, even if you're not really into hardcore challenge gaming, the fact of the matter is when games like this were new, that was sort of part of gaming culture was you were supposed to shell out for a strategy guide or a magazine subscription. You learn tricks and secrets and then share them with friends on the playground. So if you just want to try retro games the way that I experienced them when I was young, um, you're not getting the full experience without that. And there's a, there's a bit of a void there um, these days because so much of that stuff is gone now. So many old strategy sites are just... Um, they might be on archive.org. They might be gone forever. So uh, I'd like to fill that void to the best of my ability. Um, oh, pardon me. So... Castlevania 3 uh, is a game that I can beat without dying. I don't always do it. Castlevania 1, I'd say I have in excess of a 98% success rate of beating that game without taking a single death. For Castlevania 3, that number might be more like 80%. It's a much harder video game, and I don't know it quite as well. But I still know a thing or two. Um, and you might wonder... Why watch something like this instead of a speedrun tutorial? And that's because speedrunning is quite different from this kind of retro gaming. Uh, the bar is much higher. So I'm not saying it's not an accomplishment to beat Castlevania 3 without dying. But to beat it in like 30 some odd minutes is much more difficult. Um, and to do that, you have to optimize for speed and not for safety. So... If you were to follow a speedrun guide, uh, you would be learning to do a lot of extremely risky stuff that might make it harder to just beat the game if that's your goal. Hey, thank you, Anonymous Gifter. <laughs> um, so that's the reasoning. There's a difference between optimizing a game for speed and optimizing it for consistency and safety. The way I play games, consistency and safety are what I'm after. So... Um, I'm just going to go through how I play Castlevania 3, and I made sure to update the firmware on my flash cart, so I'll be able to use save states to show you, um, for example, how to recover from common deaths if you're trying to beat the game, um, you know, in one continue or in one sitting, or just without using save states, um, it helps to know how to recover from deaths. Now, obviously, if you're trying to beat it without dying and say you die on death, which is not too uncommon, then you have to reset. But don't do that to yourself until you're already good at the game. <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for what what I'm doing here. Another thing uh, I'm going to be playing the U.S. version of the game, and that is probably not a good choice, but how do I put it? The U.S. version is harder than the Japanese version, and I don't mean like a little bit harder. I mean like 10 times more difficult. Um, 
that's what I look for from a video game like this. So it's the perfect version for me. But I will concede a lot of people would probably prefer the Japanese version. Um, the most significant change and the thing that really screws the whole thing up uh, is in the Japanese version of Castlevania 3. Enemies do like a fixed amount. So every time you get hit by a bat, for example, it'll do two damage. Um, ah, that's subjective. I love the, the U.S. music. <laughs> I don't really like the Japanese music that much. It is interesting, though, the Japanese music. It's worth checking out regardless. Um, but in Castlevania 1, uh, damage doesn't work that way. So when you get hit, the amount of damage you take is dependent on how far into the game you are. Um, so if you get hit by a bat in level one, you take two damage. And if you get hit by a bat in level five, you take four. That's how the U S Castlevania three works. And the level designs, I don't think were made with, uh, were designed with this in mind. So it can be a little frustrating, uh, stuff that is really, really hard to dodge would have only done a little bit of damage in the Japanese version. And in this one, it hits like a truck. And in addition to that, <laughs> tons of powerful sub weapons were re replaced by knives and daggers. Um, bosses generally got changed to be more aggressive. So this is not the easiest version of the game. Uh, a lot of what I will be telling you works in the Japanese version. Um, a few bosses. I would argue are easier in this version of the game. The most significant of which is, uh, I think it's called the Orphic Vipers. You'll see it when we get to it. There's a boss that's like two dragon heads. Um, the Japanese version of that fight is much harder. So keep that in mind. Uh, that about covers it. Oh no, one more thing. This game has branching paths. So... Broadly speaking, there are two routes. Uh, there's the top route, which you can use to recruit Sypha, and the bottom route, which you can use to recruit Alucard. And if you do either of these, you can take a little detour on the second level to grab Grant. So you have three helpers you can choose from. We're going to take the shortest path through the game and the easiest path and recruit Sypha. The other two characters are pretty good um, and they make the platforming easier. Uh, when you take Sypha, tough jumps are going to be tough and she's not going to help you with that the way that Alucard and Grant might. Grant jumps higher and walks faster and Alucard can fly. But Sypha has really powerful magic spells which simplify a lot of the combat. And I think the combat is the hardest part of the game. Um, so that's the route we're going to be taking today. Now, before I get started, I actually need to run to the restroom. <laughs> and my, my idea is I'm going to re-record the intro because that was just kind of all off the cuff, which works better for in-game stuff than for, you know, voiceover or whatever. So give me just a moment. I'll be right back. Guess who's back? I hope you guessed me.
All right. So let's switch over to the gameplay scene. That's the intro. <laughs> There's the gameplay scene. Um, and I'll go ahead and get rid of the chat. This is just a precautionary measure in case there's stuff in chat that I don't want on YouTube. And also this way you can chat and say whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you, Sass. Um, you can chat and say whatever you want. You don't have to worry about it ending up on a YouTube video that, you know, is going to get all of 40 views. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me just check the cropping. I'm going to swear filter hot take one of these days. Yeah, that's, uh, that Lum is from the Famicom Urusei Atsura game. It's a really tough video game. <laughs> so. All right. So I think, uh, I went over everything in the intro, right? We're doing this, uh, because speedrun guides are not going to teach you how to beat the game uh, safely or consistently, just quickly. And it's not that a speedrunner isn't good at those other things, but you wouldn't cover them in a guide, usually. Um, and we're going to be taking the Sypha route. It is my opinion that Sypha makes the game easiest. Uh, it's still a very difficult game, no matter which route you take. That's another thing about Castlevania 3. Castlevania 1, once you learn it, it's not that bad. Once you learn this, it is still that bad. <laughs> it's very tough. <laughs> um, I feel like the game is a little on the quiet side. Do you feel that way too? The, the audio balance is not critically important for the recording. If it's too loud, I can fix it in post. But I think it's too quiet now, right? Is it better like all the way up here? Even now it looks like it might be on the quiet side, right? I amped it by like five decibels, which is, which is a lot. Well, sure it did. <laughs> that was like in 1992. <laughs> the game was new. What do you think about the volume now? Yeah, okay. Can I ask, is that Keto Base or is it Keto Base? I've, I've always wondered, every time I see your chat, I'm like, is that Keto Base or is it? Hey, you don't have to answer, I'm just curious. <laughs> okay, is it, it, it's Japanese, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, so let's hit reset. Um, Castlevania three. Here goes nothing. I don't care too much about the story. You want to look that up? Look it up on your own time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, should I cover the help me code? That's not a bad idea. Bill, you've already given me a good a, a good idea. Here's here's my deal. I prefer playing video games without cheat codes and stuff. But that's just a personal thing. I don't care if other people do it, and it might help to know. I only said help because I was typing it in. That you have this option. Is it help me with a space? Is that right? And then what? <laughs> Do I just hit start here? No. All right, let's look this up. This is this is good to know. Uh, Castlevania three. Help me code. I'm making one fogman attic. Yeah, it's weird. Why didn't it work? Is it help space me space, maybe? Oh, well, what was I supposed to do? Oh, enter my name as help me. Yeah, 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 that's right. All right. So I'm not gonna be using this, but 
if you are so inclined, you can get a lot of uh, extra lives by starting with the name Help Me. See how I have 10 lives? Normally you have three, which uh, I'm going to be playing with the default three lives. Hey there, Antoine. But that's there if you'd like to use it. No shame in that. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, I don't believe this game has the Konami code, no. Hey, thank you, Austin. Yeah, well, I want to do an October challenge of some kind. I, I like a community thing. I want people who've like never beaten a Castlevania game before to beat a Castlevania game. And I haven't quite nailed down the format. <laughs> Let me start over because I got distracted. Here's the something you should know about powering up in this game. Um, when you start out, you have this leather whip that has poor range and does bad damage. But then, uh, I got the wrong candle. If you play Chronicles first, you can. If you have at least five hearts, um, then when the game would normally drop a small heart, so that's when you break most candles, and sometimes if an enemy randomly decides to drop one, It'll instead drop a whip upgrade. So now the leather whip is this chain whip, which does double damage. Additionally, if you have at least eight hearts and you break a candle that should have a small heart in it, you'll get the second whip upgrade, which does not increase the damage you do, but it does increase the range on your whip. Um, usually you can get this very fast after dying. However, uh, if you're using hearts left and right, because you die and then you pick up a sub weapon and immediately start using it, you might end up stuck with a weep, uh, weaker weapon for quite a while. So just be careful of that. Um, and right at the beginning, I want to talk about a control quirk. Um, I hope that I can capture the audio of my button presses. Do you hear me hitting the D-pad right now? Do you hear that? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press the B button and immediately start holding down and press the B button again. You see how I did two standing whips there? Here's the deal. If you whip as soon as you can after whipping once, you can't transition from standing up to crouching. I don't have input display, unfortunately. That's a little difficult to set up with a real hardware um, setup, although it's certainly not unheard of. So, um, when you are whipping repeatedly, if you need to say crouch under a projectile, if you're not careful, um, you'll get hit because the game won't actually let you do it. You might think, oh, that's not a big deal because you need to hit the attack button at like frame perfect timing. You will find that that is not that uncommon, <laughs> especially as you play these more and you get better at timing your attacks. Uh, suddenly it happens all the time. Uh, the flip side of this is if you are crouch attacking and you release the D-pad, you can stand up in the middle of the attack animation. So against certain enemies, it's a good habit to be in, uh, specifically axe armors. It's good to be in the habit of crouch attacking and then standing if you see they're going to throw a high axe. I mention this now because I'm going to forget to do it. So... That's the big control quirk you need to know about. And another thing that won't really be a factor until the end of the entrance to the castle is this. Watch the screen scrolling at 60 FPS as I jump and tell me if you notice something. You see that? The screen kind of hitches, right? So in this game, and this is new to this one, it's not the case in Castlevania 1 or 2. There's a really slight uh, delay on beginning to jump. So if you need to walk as fast as possible, don't jump. You're going to lose a couple frames every time you do it, and that can get you killed. So just be cognizant of that. It's not that big a deal, 
except when you get to the collapsing bridge. There are two collapsing bridge segments. Both of them you want to keep this in into uh or take this into account. Now then, let's actually play the game, huh? <laughs> you can get the knife at the beginning of the uh, stage. It's terrible. It is honestly worse than not having a sub weapon <laughs> because you can use it by mistake <laughs> and then it costs a heart. So don't do that. Um, the most important sub weapon in the game is actually in this room. So I'm gonna teach you a little speed run trick if you wanna impress your friends. So you wanna get to the end of this room, you wanna go right and go up the stairs, right? Let me move this down just a little bit. Make sure this whole game is in frame. Yeah, it. I'm using a real cartridge and it happens there too, so. All right, so uh, there's another way. If you jump to the left here and then you jump to the right, you'll get hit by this bat and you can skip all that. I mention this because you see how I'm jumping here instead of taking the stairs? If you don't take that damage boost, you will never make that jump first try. Um, so you want to get the holy water that I just got. Uh, holy water is not as good in Castlevania 3 as in 1, but it is really close. And you might notice that I'm destroying everything I can with the holy water specifically and not my whip. Um, the reason for that is like Castlevania 1, this game, uh, keeps track of how many enemies you kill and candles you break using your sub weapon. And every time you... You do this. Hey, thank you for the raid, NK. Uh, you're here in the, the middle of me recording a strategy guide, so I'm sorry if it's a little uh, stilted, <laughs> but every time you do this, there's an invisible counter. But <laughs> thank you for the host that's going up by one. And when it hits 10, the next time the game would drop a small heart, it'll instead drop uh, these Roman numerals. You see, I've got two. What this does is I can have two Holy Waters on screen. So if I hold up and just start mashing attack, you'll see I throw two, and then the game won't let me throw anymore. Um, this maxes out at three, and it's really important to get all the way to three as quickly as you can. So just kill everything along the way with the Holy Water itself. If you do what I do, you usually get it around here. All right. Now let's talk about these enemies. These things suck. These are bone pillars. Um, they fire three projectiles after they blink red, and they can be a bit of a pain to approach. So this is something that I think a lot of people don't take into account when they play these old Castlevania games. Sometimes, even though jumping is famously dangerous in this because you cannot change your horizontal momentum once you're midair, there can be a benefit, a bit of benefit to it because let's say you jump over this fireball and attack midair. That's the only way you can move forward while simultaneously attacking. We're actually gonna use that against this enemy a whole lot over the course of the game. And there are a lot of these bastards. Uh, they die in six cracks of the, uh, the chain whip or one holy water plus four. Uh, I missed. <laughs> Good example. All right, let's try again. So I've hit it twice with the whip, right? So there. Now I have the triple threat. Uh, this thing... If we don't lose this sub weapon, which there's a pretty good chance of that happening, um, this will allow us to kill bosses usually very, very quickly. But... You see this knife? Look, look at the triple threat in the upper right corner of the screen. Watch what happens when I grab this knife. You lose it. Or if an enemy randomly drops a sub weapon and you pick that up without realizing it, not only will you lose your holy water and every other sub weapon is worse than holy water. Um, wow, the game got really loud there. Did you see that? Anyway, not only is every other sub weapon worse than holy water, you will lose your multiplier. So now I can only have one ax on screen. So you want to hang on to your triple holy water, your triple holy water to the best of your ability, um, which can be a little tricky because enemies will drop sub weapons at random, which is why sometimes I won't even fight them. I'll just skip them like this. 
Uh, this is for the Sypha route. It's my opinion that that's the easiest route. All right, for this guy, just do that. <laughs> Activate him, walk to the left, let him miss, throw three Holy Waters and whip while he's taking damage from them. And he should die in one cycle like that. Plenty of, of areas like that deep shock, you'll see. You will see. Okay, so I'm not gonna be covering this because the idea is I want it to be as easy as possible to beat the game. So I don't bother recruiting Grant, but if you'd like to go up these stairs, instead I'm gonna be going down here. Grant's level is a clock tower kind of level and you have to do it twice. So you get to the top, you kill Grant, and then there's a bridge connecting this level to Castlevania itself. I think it's actually an aqueduct. Um, and it collapses. <laughs> so you have to go back down the tower. If you're really paying close attention to this map, it looks like this is a quick route to Dracula's castle if you go up here. But nope, you have to go up there, defeat Grant, recruit him. Then the bridge collapses and you have to go back down the tower and take this route anyway. So it's basically two extra levels to recruit him. You only want to do it if you're absolutely positive you want to use him. In the US version, uh, Grant is arguably a little weaker. So since that's the version we're playing, I'm going to skip him entirely and go straight to Sypha as quick as I can. Um, if you don't have your holy water, one of these candles does. Here, let me... Just take a death real quick and find out. Aren't save states convenient? <laughs> I believe it's this one in the middle here. Maybe it's the next. There you go. So if you manage to lose your holy water in stage one, don't reset. Just get past the boss and then get to this and you can build it back up. But I'm going to reload this state. Oh yeah, those are instant death crushers, by the way. Don't get hit by them. You can stand on them. That matters later. <laughs> uh, these enemies are kind of annoying because they take two hits and they are deceptively fast. So this guy right here always drops a knife. <laughs> Every time and uh, cost me my holy water. So that was the enemy that got me to be really cautious about um, killing an enemy and giving myself enough time to react to whether it dropped a sub weapon. Uh, whoops, these guys are pretty annoying. Uh, if you get hit by them once, they'll exit to the left side and then swoop down. Uh, they're very difficult to kill on the second pass. Uh, a lot of people actually deliberately switch to the cross here, which I won't do, but I believe it's like right here. Yeah. So if you'd like to do that, it's pretty useful against these owls. Uh, what I do is I wait for them to turn visible and then jump whip like this. But the timing is a little tricky for these ones that are up really high. You don't remember them? I wonder if they're only in the US version. <laughs> uh, this is a wonderful song. Whoops. Uh, actually, this guy can kind of annoy you. Uh, there are a lot of enemies that behave this way in this game where they twiddle their direction unpredictably. So. It's pretty common to get hit as you're climbing here, but it's also not a very big deal. Don't walk off the edge, though. <laughs> I did that to show you what not to do. All right. So same thing we did to that last bone pillar. We're going to wait for it to fire and take out the, two, the first two fireballs, jump over, throw holy water, and then land and whip. I like to wait for the weapons to despawn because the timer is not a very big factor in this game. I guess it only takes three whips plus the holy water to kill them in this game, huh? In Castlevania 1, it takes four. Now we know. 
the reason I didn't care much about taking damage there, there's meat. Grab that. But you have to be careful not to walk right before you grab the meat. Um, because the game will sort of put you into a cutscene state where you can't control your guy and he goes and opens the door. Um, this is where the Alucard and Sypha routes diverge. So I'm going to stay on the Sypha route. She is really good. So not saying Alucard's bad, but Sypha makes combat much easier. Um, this section here is where I see people begin to have difficulty. Go as fast as possible. Pretend you're speed running. Don't fight any of these things. When they blow up, which for the airborne ones is when you hit them, and for the ground ones it's when you hit them or jump over them, they spawn spores like this. And because they spawn on a timer, uh, if you don't just kind of ignore them and go, you can get caught in a loop where <laughs> you keep killing them and then they respawn and you kill them, which just fills the, uh, it blocks the path with more spores and you're just stuck. So uh, I don't know if you caught what happened here. I did a little dance with the skeleton. Um, these behave like Castlevania one skeletons where they want to be a fixed distance from you. This is that distance. So if they're on the wrong side, you can, uh, Use that to your advantage by, like, walking all the way over here to get them to switch sides. See? I want him to be on my left, so... I'm gonna take advantage of that. This screen is really confusing my upscaler. <laughs> Do you see those little red lines? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Dark Wolf. I, I There is a bit of a bias there. Um, this is a pretty common place to lose your holy water. These uh, airborne enemies, if you jump forward as you kill them, uh, you can end up in a situation where they'll drop a sub-weapon. And since you can't change your trajectory in the middle of your jump, even though you know it's there, you can't get out of the way. All right, this boss is fun. I'm gonna show you two strategies. Uh, here's the easy one. If you have a lot of hit points, just do this. Crouch and keep hitting attack. You win. This only works in the US version because in the Japanese version, he won't walk all the way over here. There. Uh, that's kind of boring. Another thing you can do is stand really close to him and keep doing this. So you walk right into his face. That'll cause him to attack. And then after he misses, you want to hit him. Uh, the issue with doing this is if you're on the ground, he may charge at you like that. And it's really tough not to get hit. Uh, Holy Water does not work because you have to hit him in the eye. Uh, this is really important. You want to jump onto this orb because if you do, You'll moonwalk in midair and then be floating. You actually have not beaten Castlevania 3 if you don't do that. See? So here's Sypha. Don't say no to this. <laughs> say yes to this. The cursor's on yes by default, so you can just mash the A button and you'll be fine, but... We're gonna take her with us. <laughs> Thank you, Booty Pirate. That's exactly it. <laughs> okay, so... Sypha is pretty interesting. I think a lot of people just use her to uh, cheese the bosses with her homing ball lightning ability. And you can do that, but she is really, really strong. So some stuff to keep in mind about her. Her attack does, like, no damage, but it's really fast. Not only is it fast, but... This makes a little more sense if you have like a fighting game or smash uh, background, but her attack is almost entirely active frames. So like as soon as you hit B, the hitbox is active and it remains active until the attack is recovered. So you can use that to actually stun lock some enemies. So even though 
She does very little damage with her attacks. It's comparable to the Leather Whip from Trevor. She attacks way faster. So if the short range is not an issue, she can actually be better at combat, like hand-to-hand -hand combat than Trevor in some fringe cases. You're getting her for her magic, of course, but it helps to know that she is no slouch when it comes to melee. Um, to give you a, an idea, this is about how fast she can attack. You know, a few frames are, I'm a few frames late due to slop, of course. This is how fast Trevor can attack. It feels like she's like almost twice as fast. Um, and the other thing about her, uh, let me save state. Oh no, the save state's on the select button. <laughs> so that's a problem. When I load state, it's gonna be in the middle of switching from Sypha to Trevor, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. So I think it's this candle here. Yeah, it has an ax in it, right? So we don't want that, obviously, with Trevor. But if a candle has an ax or a dagger in it, then when Sypha breaks it, and it's important. Yeah, I'm going to have to pause before I save state. That's a, that's a good way around that. It's important that you already be using Sypha before you switch here. Hey, thanks for the raid, Burpo. How to the the high scores go. So since Sypha is already the character we're using, when we break this candle, it'll instead be this spell book. All of Sypha's spells are incredibly good. So, hey, thank you, Houston. So I'm not going to be using it much during the stage itself, but this has, it feels like a little more horizontal range than Trevor's whip and way more vertical range. And it also does way more damage. So, this is incredibly powerful on some bosses. Uh, this is arguably her least useful skill. So <laughs> this thing that's already super good, she has two spells that are better. Um, but Sypha takes one extra point of damage when she gets hit. So I won't use her during the stages very much. Um, more than a speedrunner might. Speedrunners aren't going to switch characters that often because it takes so much time. So when they do it, they have to be sure that they're getting that time back. Um, these guys suck, these Doolahan enemies. Uh, they extend their hitbox so that, I, I think some people call this a hurt box now, which I think sounds silly, but it's intuitive, right? So he's like got nerve endings in his sword. If you hit his sword right now, he'll die. No, speedrunners play all of the routes, Fog. Um, but... It has a lot of range and they put these guys by pits all the time. So it's very common for these dudes to just kind of jab you out of nowhere and hit you into a pit and you die. Castlevania three can be really frustrating. So um, one of these candles has the stopwatch in it. I guess it must be that one to the left here. Let's find out. Uh, don't get the stopwatch. You don't need it, but Sypha can have it which is pretty unusual. Uh, I believe the stopwatch is the only sub weapon that all three of the helpers can use. All right, we got another, another control quirk to talk about. I'm gonna start holding the B button. I'm only pressing it once. You see this? So I don't know why this happens, but when you're on stairs and only then, the buttons or the the attack button goes on turbo. So this guy is in a really annoying place, right? If you want to climb down here, you move like slow as molasses on stairs and this dude is just all over the place. So if you want to take him out with the holy water, which hits beneath you, you can start holding. All right, I have to save state just in case I get this first try. You would need to hit up and attack on the same frame. If you miss it, you walk up the stairs. So you want to use this sub weapon, but you don't want to walk up the stairs. So if you start holding B and then start holding up, because the button is like on, on turbo, you will miss with the whip and then start throwing holy water. It is really useful in like three places in the game. Uh, this guy, you have to crouch whip to hit. Very tricky hitbox on that one. 
Uh, this is the section where I would recommend just going as fast as you can and don't break any candles because the one on uh, these breakable blocks up here has a knife in it and you do not want the knife. So just go ignore all of these enemies. Uh, these green tiles break very quickly as you stand on them. Um, take that ghost out and walk down here. This jump is hard. <laughs> Sometimes you'll just miss this jump and die. It's okay, it happens to everybody. Meat in the wall. You really want to memorize where all the meat is in Castlevania 3 because this game is very long and damage scales up a lot. Hey Andy, yeah. Um, I like to take this guy out with two jumping attacks, just like that. Same deal bef uh, as before. We want this guy to be on our left, so you walk all the way to the wall so that he turns around. Ignore this next ghost. And go through this door. There are a few sections with these, um, like, descending platforms. They're honestly quite annoying. Um, you have to wait around a lot. And usually the timing is kind of tight, so if you get on too late, you won't be able to make this final jump. We don't need that many hearts, so I'm ignoring a whole lot of these candles, which is a good habit to get into uh, because you don't want to accidentally pick up a uh, sub-weapon that you can't use. So there are two bosses in this level. Uh, in a way, there are three. Medusa is the first. So because I have triple holy water, all I'm going to do here is throw three of them, start whipping, and she dies. But let's say you don't, but you do have Sypha's Fire Spell. Sypha's Fire Spell does a lot of damage, so if you just kind of sit back here and keep doing it, duck under her attack. There. I got hit once, but she died. Still, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Trevor for this. Oh, if you turn around here, then the game will like automatically turn you around when it's time to open the door. No hands. All right, very common to get hit here. The tricky thing about this is this pacing Doolahan enemy won't walk over these uh, crumbling blocks. And you really don't want that knife, so I always take my time there. Uh, I believe there's even more meat over here. But this time, it might, be, it might be on the second level. Yeah. Let's see. I'm taking advantage again of the fact that the uh, attack button goes on turbo there. Yeah. That takes two hits to uh, break the wall, by the way. But I stood up in the middle of the active frames of the attack, so I broke them both. It's just a parlor trick. <laughs> All right. These things... Uh, will make you mad as spit in a future room. This is your introduction to the, uh, the like rotating platforms. Here's the deal. Once I walk right, let me save state, past the center here, these things will rotate. So you want, you want the right side of this to be as high as possible when you jump from it. So what I like to do is get really close to the center and then jump twice like that. And do it again over here. It's pretty easy to fall off there. The next room has three birds. I like to use Sypha here. I'm going to be totally honest. Sometimes they give me a weird pattern and I get hit and I die. Uh, sucks when it happens. Usually doesn't happen all that often. Um, Part of the reason that I've switched to Sypha here is because enemies do very rarely drop sub-weapons when they die. And when these guys do that, if it happens to be directly over your head, chances are it's going to be a knife or a um, an axe, which turns into the fire spell anyway. But if they'd done that with Trevor, we would have lost not just holy water, but the triple shot. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, I don't care. So this room down here, there's a damage boost. I don't like to do it <laughs> because 
If you miss it, you die. Uh, but this is a tricky room. Get down here as quickly as possible and do that. Not too uncommon to get hit by the ghosts there. All right, I need to save state here again because these bosses, you need to know a couple things. Uh, if you don't have a sub weapon at all, but you do have a max whip with Trevor, this works okay, just kind of mashing on attack. You're gonna take damage almost certainly. Um, and it'll be the hardest part of the boss fight. However, if you have Sypha's fire spell, Again, you want to wait for the spirit to enter the coffin. And then when it opens, like as soon as you see the mummies, they're vulnerable. So just hold up, attack as soon as that opens. So it's way more efficient than uh, using repeated whip swings, right? And for the second guy here, he's really likely to rush as soon as he spawns, but you can do Sypha's version of that second Trevor strat I showed you the last time we fought this. He dies really fast. However, we do have triple holy water. And because of that, we have this option. Before you even see the mummies spawn, throw three holy waters, start whipping. They'll die instantly. If you have a ton of HP, I believe this strategy still works. You just crouch whip. Otherwise, do the same thing you did uh, in level three and bait him into swinging his hammer. Um, step out of the way and then jump and hit him in the head. You fight this boss three times on this route and I think it's one of the weakest things about the game. <laughs> you fight the worst boss several times. That can't damage you. That little, it looks like projectiles that shoot from the soul after you kill the boss. Don't worry about it. Thank you, have a good night. All right, this next stage is hard. I'm not not gonna sugarcoat it. The game gets to be a bit of a pain in the ass here. Um, first things first, one of these candles has a an ax in it. It's an ax or a dagger. Um, so I'm gonna switch to Sypha. And when I know that this thing's not firing, I'm gonna take these candles out. I'll let it fire and do two fire spells, wait. It'll die in the on the third. All right, this guy here, real jerk, because these fireballs move really fast. That's a US version thing. You wanna crouch here. Take out all three. Fire spell twice. There. The reason I use Scythe for that is because the recovery on her attack is really fast. So if I'd jumped the gun on the first one, I might've been able to react really quick and take out the um, the fireball anyway. Whereas if you miss with those, uh, against those using Trevor, you'll get hit by the fireball in the combined recovery of the first attack and startup of the second. Uh, Sypha is really, really useful against bone pillars. Hey Draconics, not much. I'm just putting together a little strategy guide here. Okay. There are a bunch of climbing sections in Castlevania 3, and they are almost all without fail the hardest part of the level uh, that feature them. These guys suck. So I'm gonna let one spawn and respawn over and over again so you can see what they're like. I uh, moved past its spawn point. <laughs> I can't do that anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, all the time. All right, so if you watch closely, I'm gonna save state because I might actually get hit here and that'll almost certainly send me into a pit. Yeah. You see how they bob up and down, but it's not a sine wave. It like gets sharper over time. These things suck. <laughs> They're all over these climbing segments and you wanna just kind of plan your route through these rooms so that you kill them as quickly as possible. All right. So axe armors are actually not as dangerous in this game as in the first one, um, but they're still kind of mean. Uh, they have a ton of hit points. You see that was one holy water and five whip swings. I think without holy water, it might take eight whip swings to kill them. 
Um, yeah, eight. And you remember that quirk that I told you about, where if you are doing frame perfect standing attacks and you try to crouch, the game won't let you. You have to crouch attack to take out the low axes and stand attack to take out the high ones in Castlevania 3. Uh, that is not the case in Castlevania 1. So when you're fighting these things, you want to be in the habit of always crouch attacking. And if you see it do a high attack, please do a high attack. You have to stand up like that. Very counterintuitive. Another thing to keep in mind, get into the habit of whipping the block above every door because it is really common for there to be meat or a big heart hidden there. Just unconditionally do it every time you get to a door. You never know. All right. So, like, I did say that Sypha makes the combat easier, but not necessarily the platforming. However, in some cases, uh, you want to... <laughs> to make this jump, you have to hit that thing once. <laughs> because when you hit those balls, they um, get stunned. You can't kill them. They have infinite hit points, sort of. I'm going to show you another parlor trick in just a second here. I think the way it works is they have like some arbitrarily huge number of hit points, like 64. Um, and then they heal themselves every once in a while. So there are two ways to kill them, though. One is with the ice spell. You freeze them and then you hit them and that shatters them. That one's definitely intentional. This less, the second one I'm less sure about. Remember how I said that Sypha's attack is really fast and that for some reason the attack button goes on turbo? Hey, thank you for the raid, Buffy. What were you up to? And for some reason, the attack button goes on turbo when you're on the stairs. So now that I'm on the stairs, I'm going to just hold the button. And it's going to take a really long time. But because this thing never gets a chance to move, it will eventually die. You never actually want to do that, but now you know how to do it. <laughs> All right. I think the hardest climbing section in the stage is coming up. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> All right, so this is where having the ice spell can make the, all this platforming stuff a lot easier. These guys take two hits to kill even with Trevor in the, the US version of the game. All right, so this one is above me, right? And Trevor has holy water, which doesn't hit above him, and neither does his attack. But we'll use that trick again, where the attack button for some reason goes on turbo on the stairs. You hit... You hit and hold B and then immediately start holding up and you'll miss one attack and then cast the ice spell just like that. And then when that's frozen, it's harmless. I think there is going to be another enemy up here. Yeah, so same deal as before. Oh yeah, this is something that is really hard to get used to. If there's a block directly above your head, you can't jump. <laughs> so you can freeze this guy, but you do still have to climb up the stairs to hit him. The reason that's weird is um, you can jump through blocks. Some of the time. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, I'm dead, right? <laughs> Let's reload state. All right, cool. We're good. <laughs> You see that? You see how I jumped through that block? Doesn't work if there's a block directly above your head. There you go. Obviously, it helps to have the locations of all these enemy spawns memorized, but as long as you don't go too fast, you don't need to. As long as you have the ice spell and you know the trick to cast it on the stairs without accidentally taking a step up. Hey, Uno Squid, how are you? All right, don't go down there to the right. <laughs> you will die. <laughs> All right, this is just a hall with a bunch of those like winged guard enemies. 
Uh, best not to engage them, but occasionally uh, they will be on a collision path. The important thing, if you kill an enemy that's directly in your way, you need to watch it like a hawk and be sure it didn't drop anything because you don't want to lose your sub weapon or your spell. Uh, for this guy, I like to just do that. But it's actually very easy to stun lock those with Sypha. So if you're running low on hearts, you can you can try and uh, just kill it with the stick. All right, this section that's coming up is tough though. So this is not intuitive at all. Um, these things only fire two fireballs, but the other bone pillars fire three. And in addition to that, uh, there's a limit to how many fireballs can be on screen, and it's something really small, like five. So if you don't kill any of these, uh, what happens is, as you go through the room, they all start trying to fire. You see how that top one only fired one fireball? There were too many on screen. So it glowed red like it was going to attack, but then it only actually had the ability to spawn one fireball. Incredibly annoying. Whoops. All right. So these sections are really hard, and I think they require a little bit of memorization. All right, again, because we need an, a, an attack that hits above our head, we're going to use um, the ice spell. This candle up here has an axe in it. If you want to switch to the fire spell, grab it with Sypha. I don't. So what I'm going to do is there's a bird right here. I'm going to wait and attack it from the stairs so that I don't have to jump and attack it because then I'll break that candle at the same time. Very important. There's meat right here. You want that. I'm going to save state. Um, but honestly, the two strategies for this guy are pretty intuitive. One, if you have triple holy water, do this. You'll get hit probably. Doesn't really matter though, because he died. Two, if you don't have triple holy water, get the meat. You have to have the meat. Do this. Don't try too hard to dodge. You just want to do as much damage as quickly as possible. There. Those are your two ways to kill Frankenstein's creature in this. Uh, if Sypha has the fire spell, it's pretty easy with her, and it's the exact same as the uh, whip strategy. Just keep throwing fire. Don't worry about dodging, because you'll get stuck dodging forever and not just doing damage. Um, this part's pretty tricky. First of all, you're under attack as soon as the stage begins, which is rare. So I like to just sit back here and go one, two. Those guys are so annoying, <laughs> and if you take even a single step forward, it gets difficult to predict how they're going to move, so I just let them do their own thing. Um, most of the candles in this room are okay, but there is one dagger. And it is to my left. Don't get that. Under no circumstances, you want that dagger, so don't get it. Um... Sypha has the ice spell, so she can do a fun thing here. I, I agree with that, Duke. These water sections are really complicated and they're pretty difficult. So there are two big things going on there. Do you see that shadow in the water? It's actually pretty difficult to see. Um, that's a merman. So it'll swim a fixed distance and then come up for air and shoot you. Uh, you can kill the shadow itself or the merman, you know, when it pops up. But I like to wait for that first one before I even get in the water um, because it's pretty easy to accidentally get hit there if you make that jump as soon as possible. Once you do make it, you aggro this bird. They love to do this. Birds plus uh, rushing water, which, you know, you saw if I stood still, um, it was dragging me to the left, plus merman spawns. It's incredibly mean. Um, you can freeze the water with Sypha. I'm, st I'm stuck on the water even though it thawed, which that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I found a bug. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I don't like to do this because it's slow and it's confusing. But I just wanted to show it off. Also, there, this candle that I just got is a holy water, normally. Since I already have holy water and the ice spell, it just dropped a uh, small heart. That could be a big heart, too. So here's how I like to, to approach this. I don't freeze the water. Whoops. Uh, unless, of course, a bird gets in my way. So I actually use... Um, uh, the video is only skipping frames if you're not at uh, source quality. You're probably at um, 480p or lower. That cuts the frame rate to 30 FPS. So uh, that wouldn't be useful for speedrunning, I think. <laughs> so what I like to do is I wait for the merman to spawn and then I jump. And I kill the next merman and I jump. And other than that, you want to take your time. Oh, this part's awesome. But I like to switch to Sypha for it. So now you move really, really fast. And you make this last jump. This thing's going to attack immediately, so just use the ice spell and shatter it. Uh, this room also quite mean. I like to attack from a distance using Trevor. Something I haven't touched on because it's a little less important than in Castlevania 1. So if I throw holy water here, it's not going to hit this guy. But if I jump holy water, it gets a lot more range. So like, you could do that. I usually just whip it to death. This damage that I took is not a big deal. But it's so annoying <laughs> that you're fighting that guy. Meanwhile, there's a flea man up there. So we're going to do what we do on all bone pillars here which is take out two fireballs and jump over the third, then just throw a holy water, and we're good. Jump over the third, whip it to death. Wait for that bat to go by. All right, this is a really nasty setup. I recommend going very slow here. Wait for this to fire three fireballs, jump holy water, and jump whip a few times. Now this part here, there are a few things, <laughs> there are a few things to keep in mind. Um, there is uh, an ax armor at the bottom of this, and it's a really common place to get hit into a pit. So there are a few approaches you can take here. I'm gonna use Sypha for all of them. They can be adapted for Trevor as well. So I'm gonna switch to Sypha. And, uh, so you can just walk down the stairs and wait for it to attack high. Or I guess just run in after it attacks and then you do that. But if you try that, you'll go up the stairs. So the tricky thing to, about this is um, when you're anywhere near the stairs, if you press up, you'll automatically walk onto them. But if you use a diagonal, I'm holding up right and up left here. And until I screw up and miss the diagonal, I'll never get on these stairs. So as soon as I'm like right here, I start holding up right. I, I hit B to, um, to cast the ice spell. That is how you use sub weapons at the foot of the stairs. If you want to go, whoops, I save stated. If you, if you want, <clears throat> if you want to do something fancy, uh, then instead of walking down those stairs, you jump and then just immediately ice. But that's risky. Um, you might get hit by the ax and die. So don't do that. Do what I did before. Um, I like to take out all these ax armors using the ice spell. Don't get that. Do not get that. You don't want it. Same deal here. We jump over the third fireball. Ice. Ice. And again, always check the tile above the door. Now, use Sypha for this room because these guys really love to drop axes. The birds do, and so do the mermen. The birds are pretty tricky. But then these mermen will just jump out of the water, like right in your face. It is really difficult to react if they drop a sub weapon. So if you're using Trevor here and they drop a sub weapon, you're going to lose your holy water, 100%. Plus, 
you actually want fire here anyway. So this candle to my right, that's an axe. But since we got it with Sypha, it's the fire spell instead. This boss is like the one boss that I think is easier in the US version, but it's tricky. You wanna stand all the way on the right. The position is a little picky, so I like to just line up the edge of Sypha's like robe with the right edge of the platform. Now I'm holding up and if I see a, um, an Orphic Viper spawn in front of me, I use the fire spell once and crouch. Then I do it again as it descends. Now, other than that, I do not move. Yeah, that's what they're called in um, Castlevania 4. I think it's like an official name. Do that. And you do that. If you miss with the fire spell a couple of times, you will be forced to take at least one hit because one of these spawns will hit your safe spot. And if you try to move out of the way and dodge, then uh, you're at risk of dying. So I'm gonna let one of these cycles go. Uh, I should have ducked though. <laughs> That's on me that I didn't duck. I'm gonna let one of these cycles go and just crouch and not deal any damage. So now, if I return to the plan, eventually I'm gonna get set up where one of these hits me in the foot and I have no recourse. Well, it's not gonna happen, but take my word for it. <laughs> that can happen. So you really need to be able to take at least one hit uh, going into this boss. You can pose too. Okay, if you want to do this as safely as possible, immediately switch to Trevor and do not take out a single candle. We need to get rid of the skeleton knight, so stand right here, throw holy water. Now switch back to Sypha. Um, this candle to the right has holy water in it. Meaning, to Sypha, it's the Ice Spell. Uh, the Ice Spell helps a lot in this level, so do not miss it. Uh, it helps here, too. That thing is really annoying to avoid if you don't have the Ice Magic. Uh, this jump is tight. Copy my movement. If you make that first jump too late, you have no way to... Um, Ooh, weird. There are too many sprites on screen, so it wasn't firing all of its bullets. That got a little confusing. So you use the same strategy on this you use on the rest of these bone pillars, but there's a flea man behind it. So you want to jump over the third fireball and wait for kind of a while before casting the ice spell so that the flea man runs into the tail end of it. If you do it too fast, you'll get hit. Uh, from this point, getting hit hurts a lot, um, especially with Sypha. This is a tough level. All right, we're good. I have a fancier thing I use to not get hit there, but I didn't want to put that in a beginner's guide. So all you would do, th do in this room, freeze those guys, move on. It gets tricky because there can only be three flea men on screen at a time. But the game will spawn uh, harpies on a fixed timer. So if there are already three flea men and it spawns a fourth hoppy, hoppy harpy, it knows it can't drop the flea man. So it just makes a beeline across the screen and it will always hit you. Very annoying. Uh, very tough room. Try to only get hit once. <laughs> that is your goal. This is another tricky bone pillar placement. We just want to jump over the third fireball, freeze. Do it again. And a third time. All 
All right. The candle up above me right here has a dagger. Don't get it. You really don't want to lose the ice spell, and of course you don't want to lose Trevor's holy water. All right. Pretty difficult to approach that particular axe knight because of the little two-pillar platform in front of him. The most difficult jump in the game is coming up. Um, I never miss it if I'm not thinking about it, but if I try to explain how to do it, I will fail. There's meat here. They did. <laughs> hey, the Benjamin, thanks for the raid. All right, so use the same tricks we used for this platforming that we talked about in the pirate ship level, but they're more important here because these jumps are tighter. Now this jump that's coming up, this is the hardest jump in the game. I think it might legitimately be a two frame jump. Um, and I'll get it if I'm not thinking about it. If I'm trying to demonstrate to you how to do it, pretty good odds I'm gonna mess it up. So bear with me, <laughs> it happens. Uh, I prefer to use Saifa for this jump and I'll show you why. Look at the bottom of her sprite. You see how it's just a solid line of pixels? When you switch to Trevor, it's a little more difficult to tell how close you are to the edge of a platform because of that gap in between his uh, in between his feet. Thank you, Sheriff. And you have to jump all the way at the edge of this platform. So I like to switch to Saifa. She has the same jump physics as Trevor. And jump from back here and immediately jump. <laughs> If you're holding left, you'll actually never fall off, but it feels so scary to be working against that. Really? No, I've never played it. It's worse than this one. <laughs> That's wild. That's on my list, Gargoyles Quest 2. All right, now moving on with the game. If you got past that, that's the hardest part, but this room actually really sucks. So there are red whip skeletons they do shit tons of damage, and because they're red skeletons, they respawn if you don't freeze them and shatter them. Um, so you want to move really slowly here, because it would be disastrous at this juncture to get a uh, fire spell drop. So after you kill the birds, um, take just a second to make sure they didn't drop anything before moving on. I don't know what's in this candle. It might just be a heart, or maybe it's holy water. I have no idea. All right. Uh, this game has a lot of vertical uh, auto scrollers. I'm really not sure why, <laughs> but this is one of the more annoying varieties. So the way it works is the game is just scrolling down pretty quickly. And if the top of the screen touches you, you will die. So don't jump off the edge there. Walk off the edge. You see all of these tiles will like crumble. If you want to take this the easy way, just jump repeatedly and then let it fall once you can see the bottom of the sequence. Does that make sense? Where did I save state? Um, something to keep in mind, if you are recovering from a death or say from an axe drop, the second best sub weapon in the game uh, is uh, in this candle to my left here. So how would you even do this? Yeah. Just like that, and you can get the cross. I don't want it, though. Here we go. And we're through. That section is really annoying. We want what's back there, but the red skeleton's guarding it, so we're gonna switch to Saifa and use the ice spell. This is the only way we can permanently kill a red skeleton. By the way, this candle to the left here, in the Japanese version, it has holy water in it. But in this, it has a big heart. So I don't know if that's holy water and I've just never gotten here without holy water, so I didn't know it. Uh, maybe check it out. Take that block out because you really want all the hearts you can get. Um, so we're gonna be refighting two bosses we already fought. The first one is identical to the first time we fought it, so. I'm just going to kill it and move on. That makes sense, Hermit. Hey. 
but this is the most annoying ogre fight in the game because of the layout of this room. <laughs> so these things just kind of walk back and forth, right? But you really want him to be on your left. You can hit him in the head and then do this <laughs> because Saipa has ice right now. So she can't just burn it to death. This takes a while. Um, if you want to sneak an extra hit in, you can try to hit it with the holy water bottle as it's walking away, but the flame won't do any damage because its feet are not vulnerable. Right? Ah, shit. See, I deliberately demonstrated that you don't want to jump unless it's already missed with an attack. I can't avoid getting hit here, so I don't want to switch to Saifa, because Trevor takes less damage. This last guy is new. If you played Castlevania 1, he's pretty similar to uh, Dracula's second form. A couple things you can do. That's exactly it. So, Saifa's basic attack is so fast and that, whoops, the hitbox is so good that if you just do this, his fireballs will not hit you. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Most of the time. He shot fireballs there, <laughs> but I instantly destroyed them. So this is pretty simple. I kind of forgotten that it, it's a little easy to walk back into him when he's behind you like that. That's one thing you can do. Um, another thing worth noting you can freeze him. You can't freeze every boss, but you can freeze this guy. And look how useless it is. See? <laughs> so don't do that. Uh, since I have triple holy water, I'm going to do the other cool thing you can do, which is, of course, triple holy water. Unlike Dracula Form 3, this guy's whole body is vulnerable, not just his head. So you just do this a few times and you win. There you go. I think that's a a level that, as you practice it, actually gets quite easy. From this point forward, the game is just kind of always hard. Uh, you might be able to, I don't know. Probably not because the recovery on the freeze spell is like fast, or is really slow, and he shakes out of it almost instantly. Right out the gate, the third candle in this room has a fucking dagger in it. I can't tell you how many times I screwed up I picked up this dagger, and it makes the whole thing so much harder, so don't do that. <laughs> Just don't get any candles in this room. Uh, you will, there will be plenty of opportunities to get hearts later. I, I'm sorry, at the beginning of the room. Just ignore all of those candles to make it easier. You don't have to remember, okay, this specific one has the dagger. Just know, if you can see a, a candle from the beginning, it could have the dagger in it. All right, so these guys work just like skeletons, right? Where they want to stay a certain distance away from you. But we really want this guy to be on the left. So what we can do is just walk to the, the wall and it'll turn around. Then what we're going to do is switch to Saifa. Jump and ice in the middle of your jump and then wait. The reason we froze him was we don't want to let him get too far. Until we're ready to attack. Just like that. Look at this. Take out this last one. It's easy to just jump instead of going up those stairs. Um, this room is mean. Get to the top of the stairs and don't move because if you take a step to the left, you're going to get hit by the uh, spider. And if you take a step to the right, you're going to get hit by the Dulahan. So you want to immediately whip to the right or wait for it to whiff. Do that. See that? Very, it is a surprisingly tricky room. Again, check that tile all the time. How's it going, Ashen Circle? Uh, this room is pretty tricky. These slimes are shockingly annoying. Um, and this guy up here will really piss you off. Again, he wants to maintain a certain distance from you. So if you know that, you can kind of push him over the side here and buy enough time to go up these stairs. But since I took a hit, I want to point out that there is meat right here. This is one of the less convenient meat 
uh, drops in the game because it's pretty tricky to get up these stairs without taking a hit. I'm gonna go for it. Uh, do not be discouraged if you take a little bit of damage, but I think that's the last meat in the level, so try not to get hit. <laughs> Pretty tricky. Don't blame me if you can't pull it off. You have to crouch to hit the blubber, which is really annoying. We're going to use the same thing against this Axe Knight that we did on the first one, so we want it on our left, so we just move all the way to the right and wait for it to figure it out and turn around. Uh, I often get hit by this one. I like to wait for it to attack and then go in here and freeze it. There. Now, if you've lost your holy water or the ice spell, I think it's this candle up here that has holy water. If it's not, it's this one, which is actually easier to hit, but I'm pretty sure it's the further one. And then there's a big heart here. As soon as you press up at the foot of these steps, you'll like lose control of your character and go into the next room. So don't do it until you're sure that you've gotten everything you need. Um, the hardest, the, <laughs> the third hardest boss fight in the game is coming up. I know that sounds, <laughs> Not that impressive, but there are a few things to note here. Um, this is where the differences in the Japanese and US versions can really bite you in the ass if you're used to one. So like as an example, this up here, the cross, it's like a knife or something in the Japanese version. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, uh, well, I'll show you a couple things. So let me grab that cross. There is a breakable block to the left here, and it has a uh, like double trouble in it. So if I wanted to build up the cross, uh, I could. I don't though. I need this triple holy water. What I don't need anymore is Sypha's ice spell. So we haven't used this spell yet, and we actually aren't going to for a while, but that's where you grab it. So this is plenty of hearts. So from this point forward, I am not going to bother grabbing um, candles. You remember how I said, oh, you don't want to jump if it's important that you move as fast as possible because you lose a couple frames when you jump. This is one of those situations. This part's tricky. You have enough time to kill this guy with the whip. as long as you don't jump after any of these candles. If you did, or you just don't want to kill him, you can jump over him. But the timing on jumping over him is pretty hard. Um, so death has two forms in this game. Uh, the first one is really dangerous. All right, in short, here's how it works. He flies around uh, in what's actually a fixed pattern, I think, but it's very confusing. And he spawns... Uh, homing scythes, but the scythes, like, they move in really unpredictable directions. So this is a lot like the Castlevania 1 death, but you don't have a way to stun lock him. So hopefully you held on to triple shot holy water because the best strat that I personally found, and I think this is actually what speedrunners do, is I jump onto this block up here before the fight starts, then I wait. And as soon as I see it spawn the sides, I walk off and I start throwing holy water. If you miss that, you will probably die. <laughs> okay, I went too early. There's actually a common problem with me in that strat. Do so you want to wait for those sides to start moving? The second form is really... It's really fucking mean. So you think, oh, okay, that's not too hard. And you hit him a couple times. All right, I got to get out of the way. But <laughs> there are these blocks here, right? And you can't jump if a block is directly above your head. So like you might not be counting on him just beelining for you and screen wrapping 
So by the time you realize, oh, I need to dodge this guy, you might be screwed. Like, can I dodge here? Yes, but. So it's easy to get taken off guard. If you let him move, Saifa has the ball lightning spell. So you can try to just do this. And homing attacks really suck in 8-bit games. So as soon as you land some hits, just swap to Trevor, which will despawn the uh, ball lightning that's on screen and then swatch, swap back to Saifa. If you don't, all three of these orbs need to despawn before you can use the spell again. And sometimes they get confused and they just run in a circle on screen. And you're just helpless. You can't <laughs> you can't fire another ball lightning and you might need to to not die. So that's what you do if you let the second form move. But you don't have to if you still have triple holy water and double holy water works for this too. Wait right here. For holy waters. For holy waters. You win. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. The next stage is the hardest stage in the game bar none. And it's the reason that I picked up the ball lightning spell. Yeah, you know, I've played a lot of NES games anyway. Or do you mean Sypha? Okay, so very tough level. Um, very tough level. Uh, you want all the hearts you can get, so I would strongly recommend memorizing the contents of every candle here if you can. But keep in mind, these guys could drop a sub weapon and you really don't want to lose either of your sub weapons. If you have to pick, it's better to lose the ball lightning than the triple holy water, which is one reason that I use Sypha for this section. The other reason is for attack being so fast, it's easier to deal with these guys if, say, they spawn on both sides of you and you have to kind of manipulate them to jump over your head. All right, now I didn't know this. Uh, keep dropping what, I'm sorry. They, they spawn on a timer, if that's what you mean. All right, so I didn't know this until recently. There's a big heart there, and it is really important to have plenty of hearts if you want to not have a really bad time two rooms from now. Yeah, the the harpies spawn on a timer, and they drop flea men um, constantly. They're not like position-based spawns. All right, this next room, it is surprisingly easy to accidentally take a death here. Move slowly, and do keep in mind that you can stand on these crushers. Really important. Humorously, if you have Grant, who's faster than the other characters, and you hold left right out the door, you get hit by that crusher as it's moving up, and it kills you. So these crushers are instant kills. But this one, this is weird. It does half of your HP, plus one since I'm using Sypha. And the weird thing about that is that's the only thing in the game that does damage that's not scaled by your progress through the game itself. Isn't that strange? It's safe to get this candle. The most difficult room in the game is this one right here. Uh, I'm gonna try to go through it using my usual strategies, but I will say, remember I said I have about an 80% success rate beating this game without dying? This is one room that can, that can ruin the run. So right out the gate, these stupid winged guards are spawning, so you wanna wait here for this to miss. Get on these stairs, it's okay to get hit, but it's not okay to get hit uh, while you're standing on the bricks. Sorry, when you're standing on the stairs, if you get hit, you don't go into knockback. That's really important. So I just assume I'm gonna get hit once in this room. Um, and I try to make sure that I am on the stairs when it happens, because if you're not on the stairs and you get hit, you are almost certainly going to fall into a pit and die. So uh, I'm gonna let this fireball go over my head and then immediately move, jump, shoot ball lightning, and duck. You have to do all of that like instantly. 
The ball lightning is going to kill the winged guard. And if you don't crouch, that fireball hits you. Look at that. That's deceptive, right? If you weren't paying really close attention, you would never know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't usually wait here for a second guard to spawn. So let's reset this room. So we have a more realistic look at what it looks like to do this. Move out of the way. Go as soon as that fireball is done. Get up these stairs. The hard part's over. But it's still pretty easy to get hit here. There. That's how I would usually tackle that room. But you see how I have a ton of hearts? You don't actually need that many. So another thing you can do, taking advantage of what we know about the attack button going on turbo on these stairs, you got ball lightning, right? So get on these, these stairs, kill this guy, hold B, start holding up. That way you'll fire the ball lightning without moving up the stairs. Ball lightning does a lot of damage, so it'll only take three hearts to take out this bone pillar. Get out of this guy's way. Now do the same thing here. So that's taken out. Do your usual thing here. But then instead of climbing up the stairs really fast, fire two more ball lightnings to take out the bone pillars and Almost always, you're gonna have to use one jump attack to take out that winged guard. Go up the stairs, wait this spawn out, move out of the way. All right, that's the, the safe way to get through that room, but it's not necessarily easy. The fact is, you're going to have to memorize this room. This is the, the hardest thing, basically. Uh, there's another room that I think many people would argue is more difficult. Um, especially since we don't have the ice spell. But the mean thing about this is there is meat coming up, but it is really far away. <laughs> so, um, I usually just wing it against this guy. Get up here. We go that's a big heart you really want all the hearts you can get here now there's a an auto scroller for absolute sickos coming up i don't know what they were thinking <laughs> this room's a breather um but don't get hit by this guy make sure that he gives you a lot of clearance before you try to go all the way up these stairs so wait here you need him to go way far to the right or to the left because you get no no warning or anything on when they're going to twiddle their directions or their direction. The hardest part of this auto scroller is the very beginning uh, and then the very end. Sort of a two way time. So you can jump as soon as you get here or you can jump down here. You want to wait for this guy to move out of your way. Get up here. Wait for this guy to miss an attack. Go up the stairs. As soon as you get to the top of the stairs, it starts like basically the two bottom tiles of the room will drop out over and over again. And uh, that creates new pits to die in. And also it keeps spawning new fry guys, <laughs> which do a shit ton of damage. And you never know. You might not be ready uh, ready when they spawn and you just get hit. So I don't recommend going for this, but there is a one up here. And the sickest thing is that it's in the top two bricks. Every other wall secret is in like the bottom two, but there are two one ups that are like that, maybe three. But you only just barely have enough time to get that. There's not much hurry for anything else. 
Like, you see him at the bottom of the screen here, but I'm safe. Did you notice the fry guy on the left side of the screen? This guy sneaks up on everybody. That's why you want to move really fast at the end of this auto scroller. And uh, the the size of these two platforms means that those uh, enemies can sync up in really annoying ways. So I recommend just moving as quickly as possible. Um, if if you take your time and they're aligned like this. You can't jump over the top fry guy without landing on the second one. So if for whatever reason you couldn't do this at the end of the side scroller as fast as possible, look before you leap and keep an eye out for this setup right here. This is the dangerous one. Um, so I, I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> All right. There's meat in the wall to the right here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what else you would call it. All right, this is probably the hardest room in the game if the climb isn't. So this is that 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 room we just did, but way harder, uh, you know, a couple levels ago. So tricky thing is, as soon as I jump to the left, I'm gonna aggro this bird. So I wanna do that and then immediately jump to the right and try to take the bird out. Um, it's okay to get hit by it since I have HP, but you don't want to fight the bird over the water for two reasons. One, there's water, so it makes it harder. Um, if you want to make this extra safe and you don't mind spending hearts, which you don't need hearts that badly at this point, uh, I would recommend using Sypha here. I almost always do use Sypha. Uh, the save state... Oh, never mind. It was paused. Okay, so I wait for this guy to go, jump, then jump back, and use ball lightning. The ball lightning is going to take out the bird no matter what path it takes there. Um, so that's how you deal with that. But hey, thank you for the host, Stein. Here's the tricky thing, okay? This is a two-tiered room, and all of the birds are on the top tier. Look at this. You see how they're... You see how it's not fighting me? If I jump, it will immediately aggro and it will be really hard. And they bait you into it because they put this candle there. So you're like, oh, I want the hearts. Well, now you have to deal with a, with a bird. So sometimes I jump just to aggro them to make it more difficult because that's how I am. But if you want to do this as safely as possible, ignore these candles. Do not jump for any reason until this bird is safely way off screen. You might think, oh, okay, well, I'll just aggro the bird now, kill it and get it out of the way so I don't have to deal with it later. It respawns, so have fun with that. Um, once you get to this point, you can jump safely because these birds are gonna aggro anyway and you need to get them out of the way. So do that. Didn't work, that's fine. We can uh, switch to Trevor and then back to Sypha to despawn the ball lightning and then immediately fire and try it again. Hey, thank you. That candle that I just took out has ball lightning in it. So that's your last chance to get it. And they pull a mean trick. There's a candle at the end of this room that has a dagger in it. So like I so many times I've seen people get stuck on this room and they finally get through it. And they come out with either the ball lightning or the cross and they're like, yes, finally. And they pick up that last candle and they get the dagger or the fire. Doesn't that suck? Isn't that so mean? <laughs> I think it's like holy water in the Japanese version too, which is really good, but no. All right, so. Um, same deal here. Oh. You can't, you can't really rely on that holy or that ball lightning all the time. I have played this game hundreds of times. I beat it without dying probably 80% of the time. Um, 
It's a little trickier to execute it right while also explaining it, though. Anyway, there's one bird coming up, and that's why it's so common to lose your ball lightning. Because if you, like, jump attack to take out the bird and you also take out that candle, too bad. <laughs> you lose your sub weapon. It sucks so much. All right, the last tricky thing, move as quickly as you can. And if Medusa heads spawn in front of you, you want to just kill them. Or you may be able to walk away from them until you know that you can walk under them. Let's reload this room because that pattern was too easy. I want a more difficult one. Just move immediately. We have one Medusa head to our left, one to our right. You see how I did that? That little move right there to avoid getting hit. Don't fight them and whatever you do, for God's sake, do not jump. Because <laughs> for some reason, they built an entire bridge out of those flipping platforms. <laughs> and then put, they put candles above it. Like they knew you were gonna jump to hit those candles and then you pick that up. It's actually totally fine to get the clock there, but I want to keep the ball lightning. I wouldn't care about that in a normal run, but... Ooh. Oh my god. All right, mean boss coming up. We're going to cover a few strategies. <laughs> We're going to cover a few strategies. The easiest one, if you have Sypha and you have ball lightning, immediately go up here, walk all the way over here. She can't catch you, and she just sort of gets confused and starts swinging her staff. You just fire ball lightning. Doesn't matter if she moves. That's one way to deal with it. Yes, if you get hit on the bridge, the recoil also flips the platform. It is so mean. It is the meanest thing in the world. Okay, so that's one strategy. But let's get back there and instead use Trevor. Because Trevor still has triple holy water. This boss is like probably the, the biggest reason to hang on to triple holy water for the whole game. So I do want to point one thing out. If you're low on hearts, there are hearts right here. So you want to be on the right edge of this platform. When he jumps after you walk, it's really important that you approach it this way. Now, when he gets down here, switch to Sypha. Check this out, because he will switch to whatever character you're using. So when you switch, he's like, oh, okay, I'm going to be Sypha now, right? And then you can switch back to Trevor. Now throw three holy waters. I should have done that twice. I was trying to do the, like, low art cost version. Yeah, okay. That's my fault. Because uh, I wasn't doing the approach that I would actually use in a real run. So, I'll show you what I would do. First of all, here we go. So, same setup. But... I don't bother going all the way to the right. I just wait here. Wait here. There. Um, you notice though that even though he was stun locked, he got to throw a cross, right? So there's a third forbidden way to fight this guy. Let's say you cannot take a single hit, which is not an uncommon scenario. Do so you have like, a pip left on your life bar. And if anything hits you, you're screwed. I got your back. There are two strategies. One assumes you have triple holy water, one does not. So, um, triple holy water one first. Here's what we do. We want to stay up here because we need him to jump after us. Hang on. It'll despawn his projectiles when I switch to Sypha, I think. If you would please jump up here, sir. There we go. As soon as he jumps, switch. So he's switching to Sypha now, right? Oh, but if you switch back to Trevor, <laughs> before that animation is done and just start throwing holy waters, then you switch back to Sypha. 
but switch back to Trevor. And it's important that you let him try, you let him start this switch animation. There you go. But what if you're in that precarious situation and you don't even have holy water? If you want a last ditch effort strategy that takes an absolutely comical, <laughs> like four minutes, but looks really funny and isn't that hard. I got you back again. You just want him somewhere where you can hit him. So this works. Switch to Sypha. Back to Trevor. Whip once, switch to Sypha. <laughs> Back to Trevor. See this? <laughs> This'll work. Do not fight this boss fair because it doesn't fight fair. See this? Yep, it takes minutes. But the in-game timer isn't running the whole time you're doing the uh, character switch. So very unlikely you'll like time over doing this. Um, it's pretty dangerous because if you're on the level with the doppelganger, when you switch to Sypha, it'll immediately do the fire breath, which is really fast. So I would not recommend that, no. What's the opposite of speedrun tech? Calvin Ball tech. The doppelganger boss in Castlevania Chronicles is really annoying too. Isn't this fun? I switched late, so I need to attack early. Yeah. You get the picture. I'm just going to finish it with holy water. Don't mind me. All right, the next stage is the last. And while it is not as difficult as the stage you just did, it's pretty close. And also, you are under attack as soon as the stage starts. There's a bird to your left and it attacks immediately. Wait for it to start moving, jump, and then whip. If you want, and I don't think you do, but if you want, there is an ax to your left. But you have to make this jump and there is a red whip skeleton there, so it is a huge pain in the ass. I just walk off the edge here and go down these stairs. Uh, this is an annoying auto-scroller, so I try to stay as high as I can without jumping. If you jump into the top of the screen, it'll kill you. Thing dropped a knife, so I'm just waiting for the knife to despawn before I go down here. And then down here. The reason I'm staying high is because it's spawning the Medusa heads way up there, where they're less threatening. And if I really am in a jam, rather than fight them, I can just walk off the edge to the next level down here. So I only really had to deal with the Medusa heads, like, while I was on this platform and right at the beginning. And I hate this section that's coming up. I've tried a few different ways to get through it, and I honestly don't know which one I recommend the most. Um, this is, again, something that I like to do. I like to use Sypha for any platforming sections because it's a little easier to tell precisely where you are. So I don't know. You could go down here and then just do these three jumps. Maybe that's the way to do it. Another thing that I like to do...
is kill time on this platform. And then jump here. And then do that. I don't know. This is really annoying. And I have lost deathless runs to it. Okay. Next room is very hard. And I recommend using Trevor for it. In part because Trevor takes less damage if he gets hit. And there's a timed bat spawn that makes it very difficult not to get hit. So... You want to hit this thing from your max range and jump over that bat that is like guaranteed to spawn behind you. The reason you want to do it from your max range is there are crumbling blocks in this room. It is so annoying. So we've got one hit to take and then just jump through there. I know it's possible to not take damage there, but it is so unbelievably hard that I recommend doing that. But it doesn't always cooperate and throw a fireball at a convenient time. So in that case, let me show you what to do. <laughs> yeah, do that. All right, I think that's a I think that's the nail in the jumping from the upper block coffin. No, I don't. I just thought of a cool strategy. You ready for this one? Wait here for just a little bit and then walk, and then jump. Hey, look at you, Dot, you figured something out. All right, so we're still gonna use Trevor for the room itself, because we wanna minimize the damage we take when we all, when we inevitably get hit. With these strats, you will get hit always. Okay, so I'm gonna not get hit by the fireballs. Instead, jump right into the bone pillar itself. That's how you get through there, if it wasn't kind enough to hit you on the way over. Immediately kill this spider. That spider will cause you nothing but problems. Take care of that guy however you want. This right here is holy water. I like to pick it up with Sypha. Because the ice spell is pretty useful. There's meat in this wall. Here's why I got the ice spell. Just this guy. Two enemies. <laughs> That's all I needed it for. All right, please turn around. We're gonna manipulate this guy's position. Push him as far to the right as possible to safely climb these stairs. And then I don't like to take any chances, so I use the ice spell um, to freeze him. There's a reason I didn't attack him there. But I wanna pull him as far to the left as possible. Now that he's taken care of, Switch back to Trevor, and it is so important that you grab this axe. If you don't have this axe, you make it so much harder. Get this axe. The, the, the triple holy water has served its purpose. And check this mean shit out. <laughs> Here's the pendulum room. This is hard enough in the Japanese version. In the US version, they added bats that spawn on a timer. So you have to make these really tricky jumps on these very technically impressive platforms that the NES just isn't that good at. While also going, oh, okay, there's a bat behind me. <laughs> and another one. And they could spawn on the other side. Now you go. It is so easy to get hit by those bats into the pit. And you know how they all spawn on the right? It's random which side they spawn on. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get hit. <laughs> I was legitimately shocked when that happened. Um, but that's fine. You don't have to have a full life bar to kill Dracula by any means. Um, we need to build up the multiplier with the axe to at least two, but we also want like literally 50 hearts. So we're going to farm this up as quickly as possible. But you need to be really careful because one of these candles has a, a knife in it. And if you swap your ax out for a knife, you're gonna make it a whole hell of a lot harder. It's this candle. So don't throw the ax when you're beneath this candle. So we're just gonna keep taking out these candles to build up the um, double trouble multiplier. Probably don't need triple threat, but you know what? I'll go for it anyway. 
I'm not going to take out that last candle. But breaking the one that has the knife in it will build up the counter, so it's worth doing. So I'll probably get the double trouble here on uh, this one. Oh no, because it's got a big heart in it. Now you saw that I grabbed the fire breath spell. Breath. The fireball spell with Sypha. That was not an accident. It might seem like the timer is an issue here. The fight itself is pretty long, but you really don't need more than, I don't know, 150 seconds on the timer, maybe even like 100. Isn't this music awesome for this part? If you're worried about time, you don't need the triple axe. And I'm sure this is enough hearts. All right, there's a lot to talk about about Dracula. His first phase is the hardest part. And we got the fireball spell with Sypha so that we basically don't have to deal with it. Here's how it works. Um, that moon is from Castlevania 1. It's a recycled graphic. <laughs> That's why it looks so out of place. Yeah. So um, the uh, he's going to... He's got like a, a scepter. And uh, the way this works is as soon as he becomes vulnerable, he spawns two columns of fire. And where they're positioned is uh, dependent on your distance from him. And generally, the further you are from him, the safer you are. So if you get right up in his face, like I'm just gonna rush him down and kill you, you will take a guaranteed hit. Do not do that. <laughs> Instead, what you wanna do is stand as far away as possible, which in my experience is about here. One, two, and then immediately move out of the way. Like you see, I did it too slow because I was counting out loud. <laughs> Two shots. Damn. All right, I'm gonna spawn him and then actually move further away. Two shots, move. One more shot. Let him teleport. Two shots and the, the phase is over. It is not too uncommon to get hit at least once here, but luckily that is the hardest phase. So if you want to watch me try to fight him without that, say with Trevor, just to give you an idea of like how ridiculous this fight can get. You see that? I moved so soon. <laughs> it looked so good, but I still got hit. I think the trick is you have to react to his arm moving and not to the... Um, the flame coming out of the floor. That form is so fucking hard. <laughs> Do not be discouraged if it takes you a while. So I'm going to switch back to Sypha just because I want to set this up the way I would normally do a, um, a run. So I'm going to get real far away. Wait. One, two. Watch his arm. Immediately move. Three. Miss that one. So I'm going to have to do an extra hit this cycle. And I win. All right, form two, tricky, very tricky. Basically, it sucks. It can run right into you. On the first cycle, you can hang out in this corner safely, but you need to keep up the damage. So just jump straight up, don't jump forward and keep doing the fire. Now, when you finish this, ideally you wanna be on the right side of the screen. And in fact, you wanna be on this exact tile that I'm standing on. So that's one way you can handle that, is with uh, Sypha's fire. If you have a lot of hearts and you're not confident in that, it's a little easier to use Trevor. So Trevor has axes, right? Generally, just stay on the right. 
Throw axes when he's too high to hit with the whip. Otherwise, use the whip. But you see, the thing about this is, I very nearly got hit there. Okay, so you want at least 18 hearts to do this safely, or 16, I mean. Uh, it helps to have a few extra. So here's what we're gonna do. This fight is really complicated and you wanna just tune out most of, <laughs> most of what you're seeing. So here's how it works. He's in this big old throne, or throne? Why did I remember there being a throne there? He's in the background here, and he's going to fire from his eyes, and then from his hand, and then from his other hand, over and over again. And also, there are moving platforms. <laughs> so, this looks really complicated, and it is. And if you were to say, try to hit him, or try to beat him using only the whip, you'd have to get on those platforms and ride up, because the only part of him that takes damage is the head. But there's an easier way. So wait on this fourth tile here. That part's really important. And what you do is you jump and immediately throw the ax. You just keep doing this. And then when you see his hand or his head glowing, stop. Sorry, I don't want to set a bad example. It's greedy to go for two hits per cycle. So let's start over and do it right. So one and two. And one, and one. If you stand here, you're going to be able to walk to the right and then to the left to avoid all of these. This is where it gets tricky. Watch what happens if <laughs> I do a jumping ax. I end up on that platform and it is a real pain to get off. So what I do is, I'm not speed running. I'm in no hurry. So if there's a moving platform anywhere above me, I'll wait, I don't care because I know I can dodge him all day. But he can only hit me if I get too greedy and try to attack him when I didn't really have time to. Same deal here, I'm not jumping. Now that they're, I know they're so far above me that I can't get on them, it's fine. But you really don't want to get taken by surprise by these platforms and land on them when you weren't expecting it. And there you go. That's how you beat Castlevania 3 without dying. It's still pretty tough, but these strategies will generally simplify everything but that um, really tricky aqueduct section and the really tricky climb section. So after a while when you're doing this, and I know a few people who've gone for deathless runs of this, I think they can all vouch for what I'm saying here. It boils down to Am I going to make a mistake on the next to last level on the climb or in the aqueduct? You want to see something special? Of course you do. What if you don't like Trevor? You know what's real badass? Just get real aggressive with Sypha. Get on those platforms. And do that. Look how much damage she does. Isn't she so cool? It's especially cool how she can't hit him. <laughs> Whoops. I've done a Sypha only run where I used a cheat code to activate her like at the very beginning of the game and never used Trevor. I killed Dracula so fast. It was so fun. And uh, then you can pose. There you go. That's Castlevania 3. I think, yeah, Castlevania 3 pistol starts. So I think this game is really hard, even if you study it uh, extensively. And this is the US version, which is even harder than the Japanese one. Um, but I also think most people are capable of beating this game with a uh, bit of work. Um, retro games have a reputation for being really tough and like unfair at times and I get that and I get that that's not every everyone's thing and that's totally fine but I know a lot of people who won't play retro games because they're quote unquote badly designed or quote unquote too hard or they have too much quote unquote artificial diffi difficulty and then I look at the games those people are playing and it's like my dude you are like 
knocking out back-to-back -back FTL Binding of Isaac Spelunky 2 runs like it's nothing. You're beating Dark Souls without dying. You're beating Dark Souls without getting hit. You're beating Dark Souls in 12 minutes. You're good as hell at video games. These games are not that bad. <laughs> you can learn if you want. And if you don't want to, that's your business. <laughs> you don't have to learn. <laughs> but that's it. That's, that's the guide. Ended up being two and a half hours long. How about that? You got to learn how they work. And they are... Retro games tend to be kind of opaque and poorly documented. And that is why I want to start making strategy guides. As long as they're fun to watch. Because if you know stuff like, oh, this enemy isn't moving around at random, it's trying to maintain, hey, <laughs> thank you, Duke. It's trying to maintain a distance of, you know, seven tiles or whatever. Then it makes it a lot easier. So, this is actually also another reason that I wouldn't recommend learning how to beat a retro game from a speedrun guide unless you know you want to speedrun it. Because speedrunners know so much about so many games that they just kind of take it for granted that if you don't know how these enemies work, you're going to figure it out. And you need sort of a bedrock of retro gaming fundamentals. I am terrible at four and okay at bloodlines. I'm not a big fan of Castlevania 4, unfortunately. I have beaten it deathless, but the last time I played it, I had to continue. One, three, and Rondo are the Castlevania games that I'm good at. Air quotes good. Any speedrunner would be better at this game. Like, I'm not saying that there's some sort of inherent gap in skill there that I couldn't bridge with like practice and uh, research, but I would need to practice. And I need to put in that research. A Rondo guide, maybe if people are interested. Rondo is not as hard as three, but it is not as easy as you think. That's my take on Rondo. It's kind of how I feel about Castlevania Bloodlines as well. I've heard some people say that game is easy and I think they're out of their minds. <laughs> so... That is what it is. Uh, Chronicles? Uh, I'm not good at Chronicles, but maybe. You want to learn the, about the Alucard route? I mean, I could put a little research into it. I could see if I could learn it. Really, Vance? I don't know if you, if you know Vance. He's in this chat every once in a while. He probably goes to yours sometimes, too. He's the Alucard route expert. and He'd be the guy to make that guide, but you never know. Maybe I could figure it out, too. Um... Oh yeah, Bloodlines is a beautiful video game. So since we're done recording this, I guess I can turn the chat back on. No reason not to do that. But uh, I feel pretty good about that one. I haven't rewatched it. It's possible. <laughs> hey, they're limited to over zero. You always come in when I'm playing Castlevania three. Like I feel pretty good about that one. I haven't rewatched it, but I think. That was more on par with, say, my first Castlevania 1 guide than my second Castlevania 1 guide. Does that sound fair? Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Sure, why not? You don't have the points, though, do you? Did you just get them? I mean, good luck beating someone else to the button, but you need 0.9k more. Well, you're screwed. Hey, Daniel, how are you? <laughs> Good to have you back, chat. Mm. Oh, look at that. Ten Elements is the one to, <laughs> to hit mini dot first today. <laughs> yeah, that one's on the house, Emily. I, I, hope you, I hope you're happy. So, I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. I'll have to look at it and see if I really want to like edit it together into something snappy. But I think this could be a fun project. I want you to be honest with me. So I'll stop pouting and I'll give you the puppy dog eyes. You need to be honest with me. Okay. Is this fun to watch this recording process? Or is the commentary annoying because it's too much of it? So, games I think I could do are 
Castlevania 1 and 3, but I've already done those. Castlevania 2. Castlevania 1. Ninja Gaiden 1. But I need to relearn that a little bit because... Um, so the problem with Ninja Gaiden 1 is I did learn to speedrun it. And so I built a bunch of stuff into my muscle memory that is not safe. So I would have to kind of unlearn all the speedrun stuff and relearn the safety strats. Because Ninja Gaiden used to be a game that, like, if I turned it on, I was going to beat it without dying. And then I learned how to speedrun it. And then it became a game that I was always going to beat quickly. But if I screwed up, <laughs> then... There was going to be a death in there and I was going to lose, you know, 20 to 40 seconds from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I think I mean, I don't feel like I'm like a super strong retro gamer. But I'm not going to be too modest, right? Like, I play these games a lot. So I have that kind of bedrock of just like genre fundamentals, especially with these side scrolling games that I think a lot of people who are intimidated by these games have not yet cultivated. And so that combined with, you know, my call center work and I, I used to be a professional writer, you throw all that stuff together and I'm probably pretty good for like explaining these things, you know, articulating them. Maybe, maybe not. But the, the other games I'm thinking about doing are Mega Man 2, Mega Man 1, now that I've beaten that Deathless, because I... Really picked up quite a bit about Mega Man 1 doing that. Um, and Rondo of Blood for sure. The stream is presented by Konami. Yes. You thought they only made um, pachinko machines. Oh no. Oh no. They present this stream. Teach you how to beat a shmup. I don't really feel like I'm the right person to do that. I'm not going to bullshit you like, oh, yeah, I'm terrible at shmups. I'm fine at shmups, but there are way better shmuppers out there. And I feel like I don't have the skill, <laughs> you know, like I can explain what I'm doing, but what I'm doing might be bad, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's I don't know. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit, but that's kind of how I feel. Do you have you? Yeah, pra I mean, practice mode helps. Exactly, Hokuto no Shock. Because I'm like, oh, it's time to make money. <laughs> well, I mean, no one has safe shmup strats. That's the thing. You, you always die in one hit. So you have to play to maximize safety all the time in those. And even then, it's hard. Uh, my take on CV2, I don't have one because I have never beaten it. Is that is that unbelievable to you that I haven't beaten CV2? I'm killing this uh, recording.